Hello, this is Jamie from Inky and Scrappy. I'm doing classes again in November for our local coffee shop. Her and I got together and we decided to do them. So we are doing two cards again for class. I will do one now and then I will record the other one later on when I get that far. So this is the example that we started with. It's not going to exactly be the same, but it'll be very similar to this one. So that's what we're, that's what we're aiming for. So if you have, sorry, I'll pull that back in. I ended up using the inside out scalloped border die. Oh, that is like not focusing at all. Sorry. And then the inside out stitch circle. And I just taped them together once I had them lined up properly and then I could run them through multiple times on the die cut machine to get enough cards, card fronts done for my kit. Now these are going to be white. So my, I, we're going to try to keep them white. It's, I tend to have inky fingers. It doesn't always go very great, but we'll, we'll we're going to try it. So we will keep that piece separately until the very end. But for this one, we need to start with the background piece because we're going to do some, I'm going to use some distressed grit paste snowfall on it for my coloring today. My examples did color pencil with Gamasol, which is an, it's a fun medium to work with, but being that I don't have what I need to do that for multiples in class quite yet. I'm going to be doing some distress re -inker watercolor because I don't have all the colors that I would want for this particular card in my ink kits that I have for class. This is actually my kit so it's not the same exact colors that I have in my class kits but I just made a 12 palette of distress re or distress mini cubes for class so we have a, a variety of color but I don't have every color and so sometimes it just doesn't work for what I want but we're gonna use the stormy sky from that one today and then I'm gonna pull in the pine needles we're gonna do tumbled glass I think for the face or we can do vintage photo which will actually be like a we'll use it twice when we do that one and then pumice stone so i'm not sure which one we're going to do for this one i don't know what mood i'm i like yetis that have blue faces that's kind of where i'm at with my yetis i did do an example of a brown faced or a skin toned yet yeti so if that's where you're at that that's where the vintage photo would come in if you were interested in that one and then the pine trees and everything else is already for class pre-cut out. Some sparkly cardstock for my snowy hill. And then some gems can be added. They don't need to be added. I added them because I wasn't... I used a clear... I don't know. You couldn't see it. And I wanted them to be able to see that there was some texture to that background panel in the photos for class. So we're going to get started. I am using the Yeti... I think it's Yeti or not from MFT. Let me find it. I'm about as prepared as oh, Beast Friends from my favorite things. And I know it's currently on sale, but this is 11.10. So it's currently on sale. I think they still have it in stock, but it's, it's a fun one. I've been playing with it lately. So there is what we're aiming for today and we'll get started. So I did have my three examples of Yetis. So this one was with Stormy Sky. I wasn't over the moon with the coloring on that one. I really do like the tumble glass better for the Yeti's face. It's personal preference all on you. You know, it's, and this is the one that I used the vintage photo. I did a really light vintage photo around the edge and then watered my brush down and pulled it in. I did stamp these on some Bristol vellum cardstock so they are a super heavy weight and then I also did so I stamped them with VersaFine Onyx black ink and then I added some 
ultra fine clear embossing powder and heat set them. So they do have a little bit of a well in there. I did color the Yeti fur because it is white and you want to add a little bit of contrast in there. I did use pumice stone for that one. You could use a very watered down black soot if you don't have pumice stone. Use what you have on hand. So if you don't have the distress inks for watercolor and you have watercolor palette, that would work. If you have colored pencils and Gansel, go that route. If you have watercolor pencils, go that route. If you have Copics and or alcohol markers, I love my Ahuhus, I love my Copics. I just tend to gravitate toward the Ahuhus because there's not a lot out there instruction wise on color blending with them and it's something I always look for. So I always share that. Um, do what you're comfortable with medium wise if you're doing this one at home. I will have extra kits available on Etsy under Inky and Scrappy on my store. I think I still have a bunch left from the last one. Um, they'll stay on there until March. When March comes, I won't renew because it costs money to keep them on Etsy. So uh, it's just a, you know, I will use them for my nieces and make them whatever. It doesn't matter to me if I sell them or not. They're just there for your convenience. So I will start with the watercoloring or undoing my kit and then start with the watercoloring and go from there. So in the pre-done kit, there's an envelope. And then I have the foam adhesive for all the way around it so we can pop up that back piece. I'm gonna set those there so I don't lose them. We have the piece that the snow hill will sit back behind that circle piece and then we have our three trees, our Yeti, and some, they're adhesive back pearls, but they really don't stick very good. It's where my double-sided adhesive um, not trusting comes from. So I usually peck, peck them off of the double-sided adhesive and glue them on, but that is, a, you know, you do you. And so for this one, I don't need to mark it because this is cut small enough that you're not going to see it behind my frame here. So we can ink, but we, we don't need to ink the whole thing. So about here is where we're going to stop. And we're going to actually start with this one because I want to make sure that we have enough time for our background piece to dry. I need my blue blending brush. I took it out. See what happens when I prep. I yeah, you can't find stuff. Let's see how dirty my blending brush is. Oh, it's actually pretty clean. Okay, so we're gonna pick up some storm sky, stormy sky for my background. You could do this in purple if you're gonna go with a skin tone Yeti, I think would be very pretty. Um, if you wanted to do a night sky and do some ink blending and reds and those types of colors, have at it. So I'm just going to get a fairly good layer. I don't need it to be overly blue. I want it just to be a lighter blue because we're going to go and add that snowflake over the top. And I think we should be good. You can make it a little bit darker on the bottom or a little bit darker on the top. That's totally up to you. So I just went with a big rush in a circle. If you have blending foams, use blending foams. It, it all works. And so for my snowfall, I am using, for class, we are using the A2 backdrop from Lawn Fawn. So it's the snow, the, the snow fall one. I think it's actually on clearance on Lawn Fawn. They are getting rid of it. But I do it on craft plastic and so it works really well for making your own stencils. And I probably don't need it that far up so let's see. My border is about there so I'm going to go about here with it. I did do pixie dust or pixie spray on the back. I don't know how well that's going to stick. It was in thought that it was going to work that way but it's really not sticking icy so 
it was worth a shot. The only issue is with using the stencil on this type of paper or the plastic, it kind of gives a bevel on the back side. So you have to be very careful when you're inking or you're doing your medium over the top. It's just, you know. And for spreading it, either a palette knife of some sort, a credit, a clean credit card, not this one because it's still got black ink on it. Uh, the plastic scrapers, those types of things would work just fine. I'm just going to go in with my brush here and then we're just going to go one layer over the top. Try to, we're going to try to not try to overdo this one. So we'll see how I, how I do this one on camera. I'm used to not talking and, and crafting at the same time. once we have that covered we're just gonna pull that up it did actually stick ha. and then you can see that maybe you can see there you go there you can see that snowfall through that makeshift stencil so if you don't have a snowfall stencil but you have a backdrop that has lots of little holes go ahead and do that if you have a stamp that has snowfall on it use that with embossing powder and emboss glittery stuff on it it's all good I'm going to stop the video because i got to run this to the sink. So keep in mind if you are working with grit paste to make sure your stencil gets to warm soapy water right away or have a pan with water sitting in it. I have a sink close by so I usually just run it to the sink. And then we are going to set this one off to the side where I'm not going to bump it or lay anything on top of it because we want it to dry. Alright, so now we have our images that we need to color. So for my palette, I'm just going to use Distress inks today, and you don't even need a whole drop. I am just going to touch the tip, ooh that one like is thick, onto my palette here. I don't need to drop it on there. Some of these are like super thick. Okay. Green one. And that should be enough for what I need. And then I need a red. And the only red I have is Barn Door. You could do multiple colors for lights if you so choose. Alright. And then because these are the reinkers, I'm just going to add. A little bit of water to each one it'll dilute it a little bit because I don't want to pick up because there's resin in it and if you don't water it down it doesn't dry ask me how I know because I like to paint with the black soot and if I don't water it down enough it doesn't dry for my first ones I used a thick brush this one is I would say a 12 to 14 probably but it's got a nice point to it I'm actually going to bring out my number six brush from my class kits. I think all of my little ones are currently. I have super little ones and I have super big ones out here. I don't have. It's weird. So my, my advice to you is wait with your red until the very end because red, you know, gets on everything. It's like red lipstick. It gets on everything. So I think I'm going to do this one with the blue face because that's my favorite. And because I have the little wells in there, it's going to sit pretty good. I like to go around the outside with my first layer of color. Try to avoid those teeth in there to keep them white. If I don't, I have a white gel pen. I can go back in and retouch up his little fangs. grab some water here and I'm gonna go in with just some water on the outside and because I have the wells I don't have to worry about it getting outside the line so much it makes 
and a little bit easier to color in the lines when you're watercoloring. And if I think there's too much sitting in a spot, I can go in with my cloth towel and dab it off. I am fine with some color variation in my watercolor. That's what makes watercolor watercolor, I think. And then for my Yeti fur, I'm just going to come in with a little bit of pumice stone and I'm going to flick in from his hairs. Because I want it to look like maybe some undertones and a little bit of texture because his fur is not really going to be flat. But you can just go around the outside if you're not comfortable doing the flicking. And then for the rest, I'm just going to kind of bring a light gray along the outside and kind of flick that in a little bit. And then along the bottom here, and you can go out a little bit if you want to give them a little bit of a rounded tummy. And then I do the inside of the legs and the back of the feet. Or the bottom of the feet, not the back of the feet. And then I will let that dry. So as long as you're happy with it, and you can go with a little bit deeper of a gray pumice. I didn't have a whole lot of gray pumice in there, so it'll dry back a little bit. I'm fine with it being super light because he's a Yeti. He's supposed to be white. I guess you could color him like a uh, Bigfoot if you were going for Bigfoot. Where's my green? Okay. So to give the, the illusion of snow, you can either put your snow on, so you can do snow on the top here. So I have a hard time with pine trees because I always think snow should be on the top and then on each one of those. So this one I could go this way of color in the middle and then this way draw my line right underneath where that underside branch would come up into that one this is the first time i'm painting these with wa with watercolor i did my or my originals with i think i'm going to go all the way to the tip with that one otherwise i think it looks funny i did my originals with with um colored pencils so you and I can learn together here that tree doesn't have nearly as much snow as the other tree does it happens and you can color them straight green too if you want it's either here nor there I was just trying to give uh, the illusion of some snowfall. How is the weather where you're at? It is going to get cold here. We've actually been very blessed this fall with some really warm temperatures lately. And we finally got some rain, which was very much needed and appreciated. I'm glad it came down in a rain form and not snow form. Although it's supposed to, so it was like 41 this morning when we went to the farm at 4. We go super early now, so it's like 4.30, 4.20. It's, it's stupid early. And I want to say it was like 41 or 42 when we left for the farm this morning. So it was pretty nice, but it was raining, storming, thunderbolts, lightning, all the good stuff. But gorgeous none, nonetheless, because we really needed it. Um, precipitation it was it was getting bad I'm just coming in with brown for my little tree stem there and I will probably do the Yeti on my second card with a brown face just so you can see how I color him with getting that skin tone color with that vintage photo vintage photo has a warm I think it has a warm orangish undertone or a yellow undertone and so 
I guess, yeah, that would be, is that a warm color or a cool color? I don't remember. Warm color. Cool colors are blue, green, and purple, right? Don't mind me. I'm just talking to myself. Um, so I think it has a really nice skin undertone to it, and I think it, it meshes very well for that. It's just watering it down enough to get that shade. Now, my ink palette here, I'll probably let this dry out, and it'll sit, and I will pull it out again for my next one. The glory of Distress Inks that once your palette dries, you can rewet it and you'll get the same constitution again. So if you put too much water in there and you think you're, color, you're you know, can't get the color that you want, if you're not in a hurry, you can always let it sit for a day and come back to it and it'll work just like it would have without. So we're going to come in with my red here. And I might have, when I did my original, I did not water them down so much. I pulled them straight from my glass top because that's usually kind of how I roll. And I'm just going to go right in the bulb on this one. Now keep in mind that my gray has not dried yet in some spots. So I should probably pick up that extra water before I get to that part. Somebody remind me. Ha ha. Right. And you could do these every other. You could do green and red and yellow and orange and blue. You could do a rainbow if you wanted to. I just don't know if I want to take that much time to, you know, figure that out on camera. It takes a while to do all that. All the extras. So I did pull the color up out of those two when I dried off the rest of my gray there. And I dried it off for one reason alone. I like to get the look of the light shining. So I've showed this with my hoo-hoos on my Christmas Santa ones, or my beachy Santa ones, sorry. And I like the look of it. Do I like it in the watercolor? Not as much as I liked it with the Gamsol because I could just blend out and get just that teeny tiny bit around it. I will try it with the smaller brush. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it's totally up to you how, you know, that one turns out. I guess I could have had it up closer for you the whole time. I'm sorry. So I'm going to pull some of this red out and I'm actually going to add a little bit of water to it because I want it to be extraordinarily light. I don't want it to be the same shade of red that is in my balls, but I'm just going to go right around the outside here very carefully. Kind of get that glow and he's gonna have a little bit of a pink cheek there but that's okay So I was saying, it's going to get cold, like super cold this coming week. Like highs, like 19. I'm not prepared for this. My winter blood has not set in yet. I'm not, I'm not ready for that. So it's blowing and it's, it sounds cold outside. I think it probably is. The temperatures are supposed to drop all day today. I think the low tonight is supposed to be 17. Ugh. I always joke that I was meant to live someplace warm on the beach and my parents messed that one up for me because they had me here and then of course 
I fell in love here because I was here. And well, yeah, there ain't no going back now. We're kind of tied to the land with the farm, so. It's not a very easy pick up and move type of situation. But I'm just gonna go back in and add a little bit more red to my bulbs. Maybe I should have done the red outline first and then come in and fill the bulbs. Hmm, I might have to try that next time. All right, so I'm done with my coloring for this one. I think he turned out all right. He's even got a little bit of that red glow on his cheek. If I can find the camera. So he turned out kind of cute. We'll use him. All right, I'm gonna set this off to the side so I don't muck that one up. So this one's fairly we're going to zoom this back out again. Try to keep all of my mess out of the camera screen. I've been working on cleaning my scrapbook room or my craft room. It's, um, it's a process. We'll go with that one. So let's see if this one is dry. It is. I'm impressed. That's, I mean, it took me 15 minutes to color Mr. Yeti and Yap, so not too bad and the goal is to make sure your fingertips are clean right so for class i already have them pre-stamped but for you we are going to stamp it on screen so i have it already lined up in my misty for this one just because you know time time is of the essence uploading videos for me takes forever it's called um, Slow Out in the Sticks Internet. And I think my laptop is about 10 years old. It's, it's Okay, old. so I have everything all set up. It's already in my Misty. So for me, I like to lay it on the top, kind of. I use the finger spacers because I'm not very good at, I like to eyeball it. That's how I eyeball it, you know, double check my eyeball. And then I make sure that my letters line up with either, either the, if my clear stamp is see-through or, you know, if it's a see-through stamp, like a clear one, you can line up the letters with one of the lines or make sure it's straight that way. If it is a rubber stamp, I put a piece of acetate in there and stamp it on the acetate first to make sure that the image or the text is straight. And so I am using that VersaFine Onyx Black ink. It is my favorite one for sentiments just because it's usually a one and done ink. It's pigmented. It works for heat setting if you wanna do, I like to do black ink with clear embossing powder for heat set sentiments. I'm not heat setting this one. I could heat set this one if I was, you know, working a little bit quicker than I'm currently working. And then I'm going to clean that one off and we will set this one to the side. All right. Make sure I don't have any black ink on my hands. Jamie, why are you so paranoid? <clears throat> Jamie's paranoid on that one because been here done that so for this one we get to decide where we want that hill to sit and so and for the most part on this panel if it's not right where you want it we can cut off the bottom we can do all of those things it's not a big deal so I don't know if I want that much showing so I think we're gonna go about there with it That'll go over the top. And then my glue. So you can use a glue or double sided adhesive. I'm just going to use glue because there is that. I don't think there's much for powder down there or for my glitter paste down there or my snowfall down there. But just in case there is. I like to use liquid adhesive. Double-sided 
score tape would work really well too for that. And so for this, so this part is, that's my background panel, it is done. So now I just need to go in with this one. So we're gonna set this one up a little ways and then we are going to, I hope we got that on camera. I didn't zoom out nearly enough. Um, we're gonna go in with my cut adhesive pieces. So these are actually a little bigger than a half sheet of double-sided adhesive from, like a double-sided adhesive, but it's like a half, a little bigger than a half sheet of paper. I get them on Amazon. I wanna say there was like a dozen in the pack and they were pretty reasonable. And I just took them in my guillotine trimmer and cut them down to size. I like to use them for full background panels if I'm gonna do the full background panel. And these ones are gonna be a little long, so we're gonna have to trim them a little bit. And then we're gonna actually use those little extra pieces to kinda of help hold up that middle part or the bottom part of the middle there. And for Mr. Yeti. Because yes, we will need one for our Mr. Yeti. So I'm gonna pop one right here just so I have a little bit extra. So it doesn't sink when it gets sent. It's kind of the goal on that one. And usually I only peel back a portion of it so I can make sure that it's lined up right. I will peel off those ones. I did peel off the top one all the way. It should be okay. And we're gonna move this one back in. Let's make sure we're in frame this time. And I, this one isn't nearly as picky, but see how you can adjust a little bit there. If you, you know, wanted it down further, you could definitely chop it off before you add your top panel here. I just wanna make sure that my back panel does not show where my top panel is. So that top piece is, once you have this, you can just loop. And I think that one might've ripped. Yep, it did. So I'm just gonna come down here and pull that back out. Boop. And ta-da, we're all, we're all good. So for mine, I place my Yeti and then I tuck my trees in there behind it because I want to make sure that I have my Yeti in the spot that I want my Yeti. Now you can put your Yeti on front. You can put him in the circle if you want. I kind of like the look of him in front and so I'm going to put him standing inside or in front of the circle and I might end up grabbing another piece of adhesive here. So some cheap foam squares, you can get them at the Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby. I did the math. They're cheaper at the Dollar Tree than they are at Hobby Lobby. And if you're not, if you're not doing like scrapbooking cards type of stuff that you want to last for, you know, like the acid-free, linen-free stuff, you can get away with the cheaper stuff from the dollar store. That's where it's at, man. Okay. So I'm gonna, I just want his feet just a little bit touching there. Kind of make sure that he's centered in there. And then we're just gonna add our trees. And if you have that glitter paste, you could definitely put some glitter paste on the bottom of your tree there. I think we're gonna put him down here. Let's go back and behind. And then because it's got that gel, you're going to have to hold it down just a little bit. Do I want him here or do I want him tucked behind? I kind of like it there. All right, we're going to put that one there. I'm going to hold that one. 
for a little bit just until that glue dries enough to hold. And you can do this with a reverse tweezers if you want. And we're going to tuck this one in, I think, here. Does it look like my first card? It's similar. It's not exactly the same. I probably should have put the little tree over here and the big tree over there. Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Oh, sweet. I'm not worried about that because I'm just going to switch them out and cover it up. So I might have lost a little bit of paper there. It's called changing your mind. I do it all the time. My husband would say it's because I'm a girl. He changes his mind way more than I do. It's funny. Boys. Just covering up my little paper that stayed down there. I kind of liked it the other way around, but whatever. We're stuck there now. So there is the front of my card panel. And then we will pop that onto a A2. I did a top folding card. It's here somewhere. Okay, A2, top folding card. And this one just has a little bit of an outline, so it doesn't really have an outline. It kind of sits, so it's white on white. And this one is mine because it didn't... I ended up cutting that one. It's like a little bit bigger than... Like, you have to be super careful if you're doing an A2 size panel and you're cutting that plate or that die cut from it because it's like super close to the edge. I ended up doing my ones for my card class from a six by or 12 by 12 sheets of paper so I could make sure that the whole thing cut and I didn't have to be super careful about lining it up because when you cut a bunch it's yeah kind of annoying. So that is the finished one for today and you can add those if you want. I, I don't know. I think there's enough with the snowfall grit paste in the back. It's subtle, but it's there. And it's easy. This one will be very easy to mail even if you add the beads because as long as you add them inside where your cutout is, they really shouldn't interfere with through the mail. My trick for mailing cards like this that might have a little bit of like if you use the beads and you want to make sure that it's not going to get caught, I just take a cheap piece of cardstock cut to A2 so you get four out of a cheap, you know, like the super cheap cardstock that you buy for, I don't know, printing on, I guess, or those types of things. And then I sandwich it in my envelope. So card, plain cardstock on top in the envelope and then it'll run through a lot better for mail wise. This one should be good on weight even with the extra card stock for mailing because it's not super heavy. So thank you so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments if you like these, if you don't like the real time instruction. I can always do a speed it up version instead. So I don't like talking that much because yeah, I'm not that good at it. I'm going to delete out that part because I, I don't know what to tell you on that one. So see, he'd be cute. He'd be adorable too. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, he goes with the background and he actually has some glitter because um, I might have had some glitter on my brush. It's what happens when you play with Micah. I like him though. He's kind of cute. He'd be really cute as a as a as a, as Bigfoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Bye. Over and out.